All right, guys, welcome to your 60th biology lesson. And in this video, I want to start talking about Mendel's experiments, or specifically the results of those experiments. So remember that whenever we breed something, studying genetics, the original parents are called the P1 generation. Now their offspring are called the F1 generation, or their kids, I guess you could say. And the second generation of offspring, or their grandkids, is called the F2 generation. So now that we got the naming conventions done, let's go ahead and talk about one of the first experiments that Mendel performed. What he did is he took a pure breeding tall pea plant, and remember whenever we have a pure breeding tall pea plant, and if we bred it against another pure breeding tall pea plant, our offspring, 100% of them, would all be tall pea plants. However, what he did is he took a tall pea plant and he bred it with a pure breeding short pea plant. And we of course know if you take two short pure breeding pea plants, you would have all 100% short pea plants. So what he expected to find, or what most people would expect to find, is that the offspring would basically be an average of these. So since this one is tall and this one is short, due to blending inheritance, or the common belief of inheritance at the time, people expected the offspring of the F1 generation to be of average height. However, whenever he mated them, the results of the offspring were that all of the offspring, no matter how many he mated, they were all tall. So that's kind of weird because this is the first finding. He bred a purebred tall pea plant with a purebred short pea plant, and no matter how many he bred, 100% of the offspring were tall. That's kind of weird, and he wasn't really expecting this, so clearly this was the first evidence that the blending theory of blending inheritance was false. So what he did after this is he took the pea plants from the F1 generation, and he mated them with each other. So basically, he took all of these right here, and he started mating them with each other, and the results he found were actually really surprising and really interesting. Now, this of course was F2 generation, and what he found here is that the F2 generation had tall and short pea plants, but they had a ratio of about three to one. So for every three, there is one short one. So this was kind of weird because there was a trait that appeared in the P1 generation and it kind of skipped the generation and showed up again in the F2 generation. So that was one of the most interesting findings and this led to many different theories of why this happens and we'll talk about this later on. But before I continue giving you guys, you know, the details of why this happens, remember that the F2 generation has tall to short of a ratio of 3 to 1. So just to recap one last time, whenever he took, let me change my color right here. Whenever he took a pure breeding tall pea plant and bred it with a pure breeding short pea plant, the first generation was 100% tall pea plants. Kind of weird. And then he took these and bred them all with each other. And whenever these are bred with each other, they form about, and if you say you're going to breed about 400, 300 of those would be tall and 100 of those would be short. Now what biologists eventually concluded is that traits in every single organism are determined by something called genes, and we already know what genes are, part of your DNA. And the genes are passed from your parents, of course, to the offspring. Not the band, offspring, the kids. So basically, whenever this happens, every living thing is going to get two copies of a gene, one from the mom and one from the dad. So right now inside your body you have two genes and we'll say that, I don't know, let's talk about your hair color. So you, yes I'm talking about you who's watching this video, you have two genes in your body for hair color right now. One is from your mom and we'll say that maybe your gene looks like that and another one is from your dad. Now, some genes, as we saw in the previous slide, can hide the effects of other genes. So basically, if your mom was saying that you have, uh, I don't know, brown hair, and your dad was saying that you have, I don't know, like black hair, and you end up with brown hair, what we call this gene right here is the dominant gene because it dominates over the other gene, and we call this one recessive. 
So basically, some genes can dominate over the other ones or hide the effect. So basically, if you inherited both these genes right here and you have brown hair, that would mean that your brown gene dominated over your black one. So the mom's gene would be dominant and your dad's gene or the gene that you inherited from your dad would be recessive. And another thing that we found to be true over years of studying genes and inheritance, and this is one of the main beliefs that they believed in the 1800s that we proved wasn't true, is that genes and traits don't blend with each other at all. You either have characteristics or the traits from one gene or another, but they don't blend together in any way. So basically, to sum everything up, you have two copies of every gene, and whenever you have kids, you're only going to pass one of each gene into your offspring. So basically, in this example right here, say this is you, and you have the gene for brown hair and black hair, even though black is recessive. Well, you can still pass the black gene or the brown gene of hair color onto your offspring, the only thing is you don't pass both of them. Why don't you? Well, because your kids also need two genes. So what they're going to end up doing is they're going to get one from, you know, your girlfriend or whoever you mate with and one from you. So that's another key feature to take away. In every living organism, they have two genes. But whenever you create offspring or babies, you only pass one of your gene on to your offspring. And this happens by chance in the process of meiosis and crossing over. And we already talked about that. So basically, that is basically what Mendel found, and we'll talk about why some traits, if I could find that slide again, appeared in the F2 generation, but not in the F1 gen generation in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next video.